These are the world's second largest tropical forests. They cover the Democratic Republic of Congo, an impoverished, war-torn nation the size of Western Europe. The Congo's woodlands are the Earth's second lung, counterpart to the rapidly dwindling Amazon. They act as a huge carbon sink that helps stabilize the world's climate system and slow the pace of global warming. The trees here even regulate rainfall across the North Atlantic. In a strange twist, the Congo's history of violence and corruption has preserved these massive jungles. Warfare and a collapsed infrastructure have kept the great timber interests at bay. But now that isolation is ending, and the Congo's forests are under threat. Since 2003, relative stability has returned. The withdrawal of foreign belligerents and a massive United Nations mission have made the DRC safe for logging. Among the major timber firms here is an American company called Safwa. Its owners are the Blattners, a family from Philadelphia. The company's numerous critics say that Safwa is in violation of local agreements and national laws. To investigate, I visit Safwa's main concession, an expanse of 270,000 hectares near the town of Isangi, where the river Lomami flows into the Congo. To get there, my interpreter and I ride west from Kisangani on trails that only 20 years ago were narrow blacktop roads. The bridges are all washed away or blown up. We cross each river by loading our motorcycles into dugout canoes. By the next day, we've crossed the Congo, here about four miles wide. We stay in a quiet Catholic mission and then ride deep into the Safwa concession. This company came here uh, yeah, just with one purpose of cutting the trees and that was an agreement that we had with them. But from the beginning of everything, that was nothing right, you know, they just, you know, lies, lies and lies and up to now there's nothing which is going on well. In another village, we meet a farmer named Francois Linkungo. Because of the noise of the machines and uh, our animals have run away. One thing that I would like to tell those guys that are working in the, this uh, company is to fulfill their vows, to fulfill what they are they're promising. At the Safwa camp, I meet the local boss. He defends the company's work. We have already started putting the roof and we are still waiting for the cement because we want to build with bricks. When I ask how much the company has logged, Mr. Kanzi bristles and says it's none of my business. After our interview, I toured the logging camp with another foreman. A stoned police officer with a pet monkey on his shoulder wanders around. In the distance, one can hear chainsaws. The foreman explains that the workers are brought in from other places, and he says the Blattners haven't paid the loggers in four months. The last month was April. And it's now August. All over the Congo, timber companies are out in the jungle, cutting trees and building roads. In many ways, the roads are worse than the logging. They open the jungle to poachers, settlers, and in this case, a huge palm oil plantation. With each day, the deforestation accelerates. Back in the capital, Kinshasa, I meet the DRC's environment minister, Pembe Bokiaga. His mahogany-lined office with a stuffed water buffalo head and elephant tusks doesn't present the greenest image, but he sounds like he cares. We are the lands of the world now. You just pollute and we are here to have things clean. What are we earning from that? Representatives of the timber industry's main syndicate, the FIB, say they want to do the right thing. They say anger in the jungle communities is the result of political chaos. Neither the population, neither the administration, neither we, neither the NGOs knows exactly what we have to do, how much we have to do, and where we have to do it, because nobody defined it. 
And on the other hand, the fact that our titles are so far uh, over the time uh, which is uh, provided by the law uh, means that also banks, uh, uh, all kinds of institutions are not willing to give, to, uh, give us financing. Madame Van de Ven's frustrations are not merely industry dissembling. Congo is a kleptocracy. It is considered among the eight most corrupt countries in the world. In search of honest politicians in the new parliament, it is suggested that I visit Mr. Nsimi, leader of Bundia Congo. Some people call his group a cult, and in March, President Joseph Kabila's troops massacred 134 of the group's followers. They were protesting against alleged corruption. There's a planet. I begin to wonder if this is someone's idea of a joke, but when I ask about the forest, Mr. Nsimi says some of the most sensible things I've heard in weeks. He wants the international community to fund popular education about the value of the forest. And, like the minister, he suggests that core industrial economies pay subsidies to save the jungle. Whatever the case, the whole planet depends on these jungles. Allowing them to be logged into oblivion is not an option.